Hello and welcome back to my Hanson Math YouTube channel. This mathematics instructional video regards an introduction into polar coordinates. So let's get right to it. Before we do that though, gotcha, let's do a very quick review of rectangular coordinates. That's a two-dimensional system with horizontal and vertical components, hence the name rectangular. You can see on the grid system all the squares and rectangles. This is also called Cartesian coordinates. So if you take, for example, this point here, 4 comma 6, to get there from the origin, you'd have to walk, say, four blocks east and six blocks north. Or if you look at the point on this red curve, think about if a little kid threw a rock, you could say something like after four seconds of elapsed time, it's still six meters off the ground, something like that. More recently, we looked at parametric equations. Uh, they still plot on a horizontal and vertical grid system, but parametrics add a third piece of information or a third variable, the parameter, t or theta, typically expressed as time or angle. The position x, y is described in terms of the parameter. So let's take a look at this point, 4 comma 6 again. This means that you have uh, four units of horizontal distance and six units of vertical distance, but it's in terms of this t equals five parameter, which would be time. So the rock was thrown, the rock goes one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi at five seconds. It's four meters uh, horizontally displaced and six meters high off the ground. This is the actual trajectory of the rock. And it's very useful to see this two-dimensional information, this position information, with time all on a single graph. Well, that brings us into today's lesson, which is polar coordinates. Polar coordinates give you position expressed in terms of distance from the origin at an angle given with respect to the positive x-axis expressed as r comma theta. So let's try to get to this location again of four comma six to get there in polar coordinates I'd have to rotate from the x-axis 56.3 degrees which is my blue ray here and how long do I know to make it well it's about 7.2 I got that length by doing the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared I had a four squared and six squared if you do that, you get root 52, which is 2 root 13, or approximately 7.2, okay? So we really don't care anything in uh, polar equations. We don't care about this 4 comma 6, okay? We're expressing it as the distance, or r, think of it like radius from the origin. This is a, this blue ray here. To get to this yellow point, you've gone a distance of 2 root 13, which is, again is about 7.2, and at an angle rotated away from the x-axis of 56.3 degrees, okay? So if you think about the rock problem, this may tell us that its current position is about 56 degrees high with respect to the horizontal and seven meters away from a certain point of reference on the ground. These polars are useful when you want to think about position in terms of distance and a rotation angle. So we will continue to take a look here at how to plot polar coordinates. So what you'll see here is a, uh, some polar graph paper, and we're going to attempt to plot the point 5 comma 30 degrees. So 5 is r, or distance and 30 degrees is theta, or the angle, from the positive x-axis. So our 30 degree line is right here, so we're gonna be somewhere on this radius, but how far are we from the origin on that radius? We're five units, so I'm counting these concentric arcs. So from the origin, I go one, two, three, four, five, Boom, that's my point. That's how you'd plot the point, five comma 30 degrees, because you're on the 30 degree uh, radius, if you will, and I'm one, two, three, four, five concentric circles, or five units out from the origin. All right, let's try the orange one. Nine comma 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is due north up here, 
All right, so 90 degrees. And we have to go nine units from the origin straight up towards it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Boom. Okay. Finally, let me switch to green. And we'll do negative four comma 150. Well, what in the heck does that mean? Well, let's find 150 degrees. 150 degrees is right here. But negative means you don't go from the origin towards that direction angle. You go in the opposite direction. So I'm actually going this way. Now we're gonna look at actually graphing a polar equation. It's in the form of R, which is again, that radius or distance equals something theta or the angle. So we're going to graph the equation R equals sine theta, okay? So how I wanna look at this is thinking about the unit circle. Remember that when you uh, enter an angle for sine, you get the Y coordinate. Okay, so if you think about your y coordinates on the unit circle, we should be really um, doing very well with this. So, what is your location on the unit circle at zero degrees? You're at one comma zero. So the y coordinate is zero. Okay, so that means I plot a point at zero distance, which is the origin, if you will on the zero degree line, so I am right there, okay? Next, where are we 30 degrees on the unit circle? 30 degrees is root three over two comma one half. So one half or 0.5 is the Y value. So I am going to go 0.5, so we're gonna count by tenths here, and I'm gonna to go towards the 30 degree marker so I'm gonna go one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, or the 0.5, so I am right there. At 45 degrees, you're at root two over two, which is about 0 0.707 or seven tenths. So I'm gonna start at the origin. I'm going to go towards 45 degrees and do seven tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my point is right there. Uh, next, 60 degrees, uh, the Y coordinate on the unit circle is root three over two, which is 0.866 approximately. So I'm gonna start at the origin. I'm going to go along the 60 degree radius and I'm gonna count one tenth, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This would be nine, so I'm about right there. And then finally at 90 degrees, the sign is one, so I'm gonna head towards 90 degrees and I need to go um, one, which would be 10 tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, boom. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to put in all the other values, which would be symmetrical, and let's see what shape we're dealing with here. Okay, so by symmetry, you can see I put in the remaining values. And what we have here is we have a circle that goes through these points as well as I can freehand, something like the following, okay? So you can see it's kind of tangent to the origin. It kind of bottoms out there. And um, this would be here, if I draw a line through it, this would be a distance of one, going from zero to one. So that's an example of plotting points using a uh, equation in polar form. So next we're gonna transition into how to use the graphing calculator to do this, and we will wrap up this video. All right, for our last example here, I am going to show you how to use your TI-84 or TI-83 calculator to graph polar equations. So get that calculator out, hit pause if you need to, and let's do it. Okay, so I opened up my calculator and I turned it on and I noticed that I'm in uh, parametric mode from last time. So if your calculator has been acting wonky or if you're not sure, you might wanna do the following. 
I'm going to set reset uh, back to the default setting. So to do that, you do the following. You hit second plus, which brings you into the memory. That was second plus. I want to reset, so that's seven. And I want to go back to defaults, which is two. And then I do want to do it, which is two. Okay, default set, you would see the same thing. So now if I go to Y equals, I do not see parametrics. I see um, a regular old rectangular equation. The only thing is if I hit graph, I'm not gonna see anything because the equal sign is not darkened in. So if I wanna see the graph, I need a cursor over and hit enter. You always want your equal sign to be darkened in or else if you hit graph, you won't see anything. So there is my parabola because I had a quadratic equation entered in. Okay. So let me show you wonderful people how to do polar equations. So here we go. Stick with me. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is the following. You want to go into mode. So please click on mode. And you want to go down to, uh, I'm going to go to degrees. We're going to work with degrees. You could do degrees or radians. I'm going to do degrees. So click enter on degrees. And you want to go function, you want to arrow over, not parametric, you want to go one more, so that's blinking on polar, click enter. So now you are in polar coordinates. But don't get too uh, excited, there's a little bit more we have to do. Next, you want to go into format. Format is above zoom, so you hit second zoom to get to format. That was second zoom to get to format. I'm in rectangular right now, graphing calculator mode. I want to be in polar graphing calculator. So click the cursor over and it's blinking on polar, hit enter. So now I'm in polar, coordinates are on, uh, the grid is off. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go over to grid line. So it's blinking on grid lines, hit enter. Uh, grid color, I don't care, axes. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna turn labels on. We'll see what that does, labels on. And we should be good. So if you have these settings, go to Y equals, click Y equals in the upper left. And now we are in polar mode because polar always starts with R equals. So let's do the one that we just did by hand, which would be R equals sine theta. You got to hit your X T theta, your variable button right here, which you can see my mouse. Boom. And I'm going to close the parentheses. Now, I know you're uh, itching to hit graph, but no, no, no. I'm going to hit window and I'm going to think about what we're doing. Okay. We're going to go from zero degrees to 360. All right. And let's do, this would be our angle step or degree step. Let's go in 15 degree increments. So I'm gonna change that to 15. Uh, let's do, um, we could see from doing it by hand that you never go past one. So let's go negative one to positive one. Keep your X scale at one. Y min negative one, Y max one, Y scale one. Okay, the, you know, if, if you can't see all the graph, you can use larger values for these X min max and Y min maxes. But to see it here, you gotta think about, you know, if you're dealing with um, sine and cosine in that, you know, zero to 360 is a safe bet and um, 15 degree steps is good so that you can see your 30, 45, 60, et cetera. All right, let's do it, graph, boom, all right. Hey, that's kind of like what I sketched by hand, but why does it look so oval? Well, you need to hit zoom square. Zoom square, which is five, it adjusts for the pixels. So there's the deal, my friends. Now, if you hit trace, you can see that we have uh, zero, zero, okay? At 15 degrees, which we don't normally look at on the unit circle, you have a Y value of 0.25. 30 degrees, there's your half, okay? So that is, if you were to draw a straight line from the origin to the blinker, that would be a length of a half, okay? 
There's your 45 and your 0 0.707, which is root two over two. There's your 60 degrees and your root three over two, which is 0.866. So if, again, if you drew a radius from the origin to the blinker, that would be a length of 0.866, not quite to one. How do you get to one? Well, you go due north here. So from the origin, it's one unit all the way up here. Now I can keep going. You can see my 150 degrees is 0.5. 180 degrees, we're back at the origin. Now something interesting is gonna happen. Uh, let's go to 210 degrees, we're at negative half. Well, why negative? Well, at 210 degrees, your sine value, your y is negative. So again, this 210, that is like a reference angle of 30. So 30, you're back to 0.5. But again, you know, it's just, it's a negative value because of sine at 210 degrees. Uh, so there you have it. You can click, keep clicking trace and go around until your heart is content. Notice that it will stop at 360 because if you go back to window, that is where I told it to stop. Okay. Um, again, if you wanted to zoom out a little bit, you could click window and you would simply make the uh, X min, you could make it like negative five, X max to five, and you could do Y min negative five to Y max of five. If you hit graph, there it is. Again, it just kind of zooms it out. If you want to make it look less distorted, zoom five. Boom. Okay, so there you have it. If you need to watch this again to review the steps, um, that is certainly uh, the way to do it. If you get all goofed up, I showed you how to reset back to defaults. This was a short crash course into graphing polar equations on the TI-8384 calculators. Uh, if polar equations are new to you, then hopefully you know more now than you did yesterday. So thank you very much. This concludes my intro to Polar's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great day and good luck with your studies.